Autumn Burchett versus Tomasz Pokorny. It's going to be Goblins versus Four Color Midrange. Corey, what do you make of this matchup? We're, we're going to be seeing this one quite a while, and we have seen it quite a few times already this weekend. We've been seeing it a lot, and we've been seeing a lot of Autumn for so very long right now. And Autumn has just been destroying people that have been playing these four color and Sultai mid range lists. So you gotta you gotta favor Autumn with Goblins here. It's just been a, a masterclass so far. Yeah, it's, it's almost as if anything that Autumn picks up, like it just it plays so beautifully. Yes. Autumn is just phenomenal with whatever deck she plays, and it's just. It's wonderful to watch as we see these two goblins swing in here for lethal, but these ether gusts are going to uh, make sure that that does not happen. That's not the case. Yeah, double ether gust here. And the thing is, ether gust up against this herald's horn looks pretty bad. This mm -hmm. herald's horn technology against Sultai. I, I didn't even know this card existed leading into this tournament until we saw <laughs> until we saw Autumn and Emma and the rest of um, the testing team's mm -hmm. list. I didn't even know this was a thing, and it is just so good against these Sultai decks, not running into Aether Gust. Really no removal for it because people don't play a lot of Maelstrom pulses and stuff. It's just a really heads-up uh, way to approach this. Reading pull off the top here for Tomas Bacorni, who has the Uro available to be escaped, so we'll had the live turtle and uh, just try and keep him alive here in this matchup against Autumn's ferocious little goblin friends. Yeah, absolutely. And we just look at these Herald's Horns once again. It's like Autumn is for sure drawing three cards next turn because those two goblins were put on top. Uh, just really, really cool interaction there with Aether Gust. Yeah. We were a Titan of Nature's Wrath drawing another land off the top. Mm. So not what Tomash wants to see. But uh, nevertheless, it, does have the powerful Titan on his side now. And there's already a world where whatever card is underneath those two goblins from Autumn, you know, I mean, Muxus being the ideal one, but mm -hmm. there's certain draws that just give her the win right now. With those two castles in play, that is that is a, a big thing as well. Yeah. So still, still some work to do here for these little goblins to get past this Uro Titan of Nature's Wrath. Herald's Horn is going to trigger twice. Take a look at the top card and reveal it. So there's the Gem Palm Incinerator. I would like there's to take the action. Goblin War Chief. <laughs> there is another horn. So third horn, not the greatest thing we'd like to see. Uh, can cycle away the Gem Palm Incinerator to go digging for something else. Mm -hmm. It won't be yeah. able to kill Uro. It yeah, wishes. Well <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, so won't be able to uh, present lethal this turn. So it will be interesting to see if Autumn decides to just cycle the gem palm just to find Muxus. You know, that seems mm -hmm. like uh, the card you want for sure. Um, but I totally could see merit to just playing it as well. Because mm -hmm. with these two castle Embrus, all of a sudden if Uro attacks, um, putting Tomash to, uh, to nine with two castle activations... That's eight. Yeah, I guess that's eight. So it's not lethal. So Uro is probably um, acceptable to attack next turn, but any mm -hmm. goblin off the top would be lethal. So Autumn just deliberating whether or not to play this as a creature or if we're going to cycle it away. Going for the cycle. Going to deal one damage to all Uro. He's not going to mind too much about that. And a Shadow Skull smashing off the top. Mm -hmm. Not enough to kill this pesky Titan, though. Not enough, but that's a pretty good plan B if Autumn is not able to win the game next turn is just Shatter Skull smashing that Uro. Because mm -hmm. if we look at Tom Marsh's uh, sideboard or graveyard right now, it's there isn't one. It's, it's so, bare. <laughs> it, it's bare. There's not much uh, action to help Uro come back after this. Uh, oh my ooh, goodness. He great. is flooding hard. Yeah. We'll see about this Triome here. Yeah, so the Triumph can certainly help. Doesn't know what card is in hand here for Autumn. It's kind of just hoping and praying it's not a Muxus. Exactly. So let's cycle away this Triumph. Let's see what's on top. It's another land. Oh, oh. that's Even brutal. A, a totally brutal. Even a Lakranko. I mean, I, if we see a Goblin on top of Autumn's deck, it's going to be really tough. Um, for Tomas to win here. 
Yeah, and I love this inclusion of Herald's Horn. It's just such a great way to filter through your library and restock your hand. You know, I, I'm like kudos to this team for figuring out that this is a really, really good card to have in this deck. It's so good. Oh, Ooh, hello. I, I think some that's haste. it already. Yeah, just play this Goblin Chieftain and pump up the team with Castle Ambrith. Yeah, because we do have uh, the Goblin cost two, so we have five mountains left. We put that mountain into play. That's double castle activation. Uh, Is that yeah, enough? I think so. Now, if Autumn goes for it, though, right? Because if there's any removal spell, you would rather Shatter Skull Smashing. But actually, yeah, yeah, so that is the real cost. That is the real cost, because if you go to pump um, twice here, then all of a sudden uh, Tomash just kills the Goblin Chieftain. Then Uro's still on the battlefield, and the game is not over, and then you get to attack with Uro again. So uh, you could play conservatively here and just Shatter Skull smashing the Uro um, and attack for five and try mm -hmm. to win next turn, but you know then there could be an extinction event. So we'll, we'll see what Autumn does here. Autumn being up a game as well, perhaps give her a little bit more freedom to be, I don't want to say reckless, but, you know, <laughs> risk it for the biscuit and see uh, see if it pays off. Oh, that is definitely not how Autumn looks at any game. Mm -hmm. Every game is so important to her that will she will always just be playing her best magic no matter what. Yeah, for sure. Yep. It's one thing we've all come to appreciate and love about Autumn Burchett as these two goblins swing in now. Let's see if we can get the win here. Yeah, she truly pr has proven herself as one of the greats in this game. No question about it. Are we going to go for it? Castle Ambrith time, baby. If you go for one, you go for both. So I would yep. assume we are going for it. We're going for it. Let's do it. <laughs> I love how Tomash is just tapping things, being like, uh, this is fine. This is fine, right? Yeah. You think I have a mythos of Nethroi, right? Exactly what Tomash is trying to bluff. <laughs> Honestly, when players do that, I am almost always going for it. I don't know if that's a good play or not, but Psyche, <laughs> you know, uh, just how my brain works is I usually just go for it when I yeah. see that. Stuff. Just go yeah. for it. Put foot. Here comes the good game, there go the goblins, and that is going to be the victory for Autumn Burchett in a clean 2-0 with mono-red goblins. Corey, that was, uh, that was quite the, the, the 